Hi, this is Phil Chandler in my uh, traditional beekeeper's black um, outfit here. Um, just doing a quick bit of uh, work on one of my quadratic hives, which is which came through the winter really well. They're on, um, well, they were just a few minutes ago on uh, five boxes. They're now on four because I've taken the top box off. This top box is actually one of um, Albert Tubak's um, urban mini beehive box things. And uh, what I've been trying to do is persuade them to build um, upwards into it, which is always a bit tricky. They have, to some extent, succeeded. As you can see, if I just tip this back a bit, maybe you can see through the window, maybe you can't. Um, but inside, there is actually uh, one, two, possibly three, nicely drawn cones from the top. But they've also, as you can see here, built combs upwards from uh, this box. I'm just going to open this. Here you go. Here's the bees. Um, they've built comb upwards from this level um, into the uh, into the top box, mainly because there were no uh, top bars on this level at all. So it's not really surprising they've done that. Um, but it's a lesson uh, for those of you who who want to or who have attempted to build to get bees to build upwards into a box above them. Um, they're quite reluctant to do it, uh, other than by building directly on top of the comb they've already built. Now that actually applies whether there's top bars there or not. But if we look in here, I've actually, there's a few exposed lava there because I've actually broken um, the, uh, the bond there. But they are drone, if I can just move the bees aside slightly. There are drone pupa in there. And this is an opportunity, uh, before the bees attempt to repair the damage I've done, um, it's an opportunity to look in there and notice that there's absolutely no sign of any varroa on those exposed drone pupa, which I take to be a good sign that there's not many varroa in this hive at all, because they tend to, uh, if you find them anywhere, you're going to find them on the drone pupa. The other thing you can see in here is, um, right here is some nice bee bread, uh, which is uh, pollen fermented in nectar, and it's one of my favourite things to eat, so I'm just going to help myself to that bit. So what else can we see? Um, where I've broken the, the bond, you can also see some developing queen cells right here where my fingers are. And obviously that tells me that they are giving consideration to raising queens. And in fact, if you look in there, you can see that there are actually larva and royal jelly in them. Now, as it so happens, I've got a colony that is in need of a new queen. So I'm actually going to give these cells to that colony right now and um, see if they'll take them on. Uh, it doesn't always work but it's always worth a try. Now this is this right here as you can see is a top bar hive with um, some insulation courtesy Virgin Airways. Thank you very much Virgin Airways. Um, and what I'm going to do with these queen cells, you can see I've got there's quite a bit of wax around the top here, which I can use to fix them in place. Now I've just actually done a quick check of this hive, so I know they are queenless. I was expecting them to be queenless anyway, because um, they uh, this is split from another colony. Um, what I'm going to do, in fact, see here, I've already got uh, a nice convenient gap. Uh, in which to place these cells. So because this is a bar that I've made specially to use with this feeder and you can see if I put it down without crushing anything um, you can see that there's a slot in the feeder which fits ni nicely over that slot in the bar and that allows the bees to come up and help themselves to fondant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, part of that slot. I'm just going to do this one-handed of course because I've got a camera in the other hand and of course I left my hive tool over there, so I'm just going to do this manually. Here we go. Right, so I'm just going to pop these two queen cells in the gap. Just press the wax with my thumb against the woodwork just to make sure it's stuck, because obviously we don't want those falling off. Um, there's quite a lot of pollen, which is acting as a bit of a um, non-stick ingredient. Okay, good. Now then, uh, get your heads down, girls, because... Go on, down you go. Down, down, down. That's it. So I'm just going to close that up without crushing any bees. 
and with any luck those bees will take on those queen cells and raise that queen as their own. Um, when you're using this type of feeder, sorry about the, um, the, the crappy camera work here, but when you're using this type of feeder with fondant you have to remember, I just put it under there, there's a plastic gate which goes in here for feeding liquids. When you're feeding fondant obviously you have to take that plastic gate out because they can't get through it. Um, and okay these bees here are just getting a little bit kind of fidgety but they're okay they're fine they're not stinging. Um, nice dark bees these are these are pretty much near native um, Apis mellifera mellifera stock um, and they're very very nice to work with. So they've got uh, the makings of a new queen or two new queens and we'll see what they make of those and we give them a few days before we check them. Um, whoa, that's a bit bright. I'm using, um, this is Reflectix, this stuff. Normally it's in c close contact with the top bars to provide the maximum amount of insulation. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to get my water spray to close that up so I don't damage any bees. So, there you go. So we've taken some queen cells from this hive, which has, um, as you can see, very uh, calm, gentle bees. Here we go. I can, I can handle them very easily without any gloves on. And uh, I've given the, their queen cells. Now there may well be more queen cells in there, which uh, I will investigate later. So what I need to do now is to just get the bees off this bit, th this uh, this protruding comb. I'm just gonna. Uh, I think I'm just going to cut it off actually. It's uh, a quick and dirty way of doing it. I'll give it back to the bees to tidy up. So the lesson here is um, if you want bees to build into a new box, it's actually better to put the box underneath them rather than above them unless you have um, full sheets of foundation pretty much and of course I don't use foundation in these little um, boxes other than sometimes I use starter strips so sorry bees I'm just gonna move you to one side there we go right now this box is gonna go actually at the bottom of the stack under uh, sorry on top of um, the other Albert Chewback box um, so because I'm migrating them from the, um, in this case I'm migrating them from the quadratic hive into Albert's, um, what's it called? Urban, urban <laughs> beehive, mini hive thing, whatever it is. And so what I've done here, because these guys don't have any um, top bars in this top box, all right, so here's the top box doesn't have any top bars in it so they're just going to carry on as before and you can see they're now looking out trying to look after those pupa I don't know they're probably going to throw them out not sure they may try to repair the damage but anyway I'm going to give them this eek to build comb in as they please so I'm just going to put a cover sheet on it if I can find the cover sheet uh, which of course I've lost for these little hives I make a cover sheet out of Reflectix because it's um, a good, well it's, it's, it's a reflector of heat obviously the name kind of implies that. Um, it's like two layers of bubbles um, between sheets of a polymer film which is, um, I got an atomized aluminium finish so it's good at reflecting heat and so it's reflecting the heat back into the hive which is what we want of course. So this is the intermediate step. I've just put what was the top box onto the uh, lowest box. So there are now two of Albert's boxes, uh, one on top of the other. One's got a window in the front, so we can have a little peek through there. Not you can see anything, but uh, you can see what, how they're getting on. And then I'm going to put the rest of the hive, which is now over here temporarily, on top of this one, and they'll now be able to incorporate this 
second box into their cone building schedule. So it's going to be tricky to do holding the camera, but here we go. You better watch the reaction of the bees to this move. And here we go. Top. Right. So there we go. Everything back to normal, um, but I've just reversed those boxes. That's all. Um, as you can see, bees are kind of crazy building, bringing in pollen and uh, feeding their babies and doing all those things. They don't use the floor entrance very much. They seem to prefer to use these upper entrances. And even though they've always had the option of a floor entrance, and there's one bee down here fanning, uh, but the others aren't taking the hint, they prefer to use these holes up here. And this is my habit now to use on vertical highs, always to have um, entrances, one entrance per box. You'll notice there's an extra eek in the system here, uh, right here, but that's okay. That will just be an extension from the cone building on this box. They can actually extend upwards and downwards from that box. Now, I don't mind. That's fine. We can handle that. And uh, so I'm just going to let these guys get on with life. <laughs>